Oh, Senator Kobach. Thank you very much. Colleagues, I'd like to talk a little bit about social issues and specifically address why do social issues matter. You know, politicos often attempt to classify political issues that we face as either economic or social. These classifications presuppose that there's no significant connection between economic and social issues. They couldn't be more wrong. Many of you may be familiar with a book written around the time of our founding as a nation called The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. The book was very influential in the development of our free market economic system as it addresses core concepts like the division of labor, the idea that wages are to be set on the basis of the difficulty of the task and many other provisions. Were you aware though that The Wealth of Nation was preceded by another book by Adam Smith called The Theory of Moral Sentiment? The book described moral judgments that drove financial decisions. A more contemporary way of looking at this connection that I would like to share is often shared by a former Ohio congressman by the name of Bob McEwen. He frames the discussion in context of first party, second party, and third party transactions. A first party transaction is when you purchase a service for your personal benefit with your personal funds. Quality and cost are both drivers in your purchase decision. A second party transaction is when you purchase a service for somebody else using your funds, like a birthday gift. Cost is a primary driver for most people, while quality typically just needs to pass a sniff test. There's a reason why we have a lot of regifting that goes on with a lot of our friends and family. And a third party transaction is when you purchase a service for someone else using someone else's funds. Cost and quality are not principal concerns in your purchase decision. Now, in order to achieve a prosperous society, it would seem that you need more first-party transactions and less third-party transactions. Now, why is this a matter of concern for this body? All government transactions are third-party transactions. Third-party transactions are only useful when we have a, an only effective and only efficient when we have moral and virtuous public servants in government. These transactions are only effective when we love our neighbors as ourselves. Is it any wonder why the cost of government continues to increase while the quality of service prov that's provided decreases? The fact of the matter is that social issues are just as important as economic issues. Our nation, our state, our communities will not achieve economic prosperity without a moral citizenry and commensurate moral representation in government. John Adams once famously observed, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. In light of the morals of many who currently serve in elected office, I believe that you will see why I'm such a staunch advocate of limited government. We all took an oath to support this Constitution. It is my belief that in order to effectively honor this oath and support our Constitution, we need to promote the need for morality and religion in our society and in the way that we conduct our lives. An amazing step towards that end occurred two weeks ago while this body was not in session. It wasn't covered by major media markets in the state or even Gongwer News Service here in Lansing, but it was an amazing event nonetheless. Over 8,000 people of faith journeyed from across the state to the steps of the Capitol to hear Franklin Graham as part of his Decision America tour. His message was very simple. Pray, vote, and engage. It is my hope that each of us will do just that, pray, vote, and engage. The continued economic pros prosperity of our nation depends upon it. I'd like my remarks added to the journal, please. Without objection, your remarks will be printed in the journal.